Yo, what's up boys, Sir Tonic here, and today I'm going to be walking you guys through one more time um, DS4 Windows, and I'm going to show you guys some features you probably don't know about, and also hopefully answer some questions that I was getting um, in the comment section on my last video. Now that did video did really good, and if you guys really enjoy this video, make sure you guys drop me a like real quick, and subscribe if you are new, because I'll be posting more stuff like this. Um, like you know, removing input delay and all that kind of good stuff. Um, also, I was getting a lot of questions on that video, and if you guys have any questions that I don't answer during this video, make sure you guys go ahead and either go to my Instagram, my Twitter, or just DM me on Discord. I'll, I'll leave all that stuff in the description for you guys, and uh, hopefully I can get some of your guys' questions answered. So if you do enjoy this video, make sure you use Coder Tonic in the Fortnite item shop. Thank you for all those guys who do support me, and uh, see you in the video. Peace. Alrighty guys, so I wanted to go ahead and start this video up with a few disclaimers. Um, the first one being you cannot use a headset of any sort with this controller. Um, if you're using your controller during Bluetooth, there's no reason you should be using it anyway, plugging a headset into it, but the software isn't that advanced yet to the point where it'll actually send audio through that as well, so it does not work. Um, now I'm pretty sure that actually does work with an Xbox controller. Um, someone test that out for me and let me know in the comments, I'm actually curious because I don't have an Xbox controller anymore, so I'm curious to see if that would work. But um, yeah, so if you guys, you get a way higher um, audio quality with plugging your headset directly in your PC anyway, so... If you have a setup it's a lot better to just do that another thing people were asking me was why does their ds4 windows look different than mine um unless you don't have the correct version installed which by the way this is the very newest version of ds4 windows i'll make sure i drop a link down in the description of the newest version um also if you have the if you downloaded ds4 windows before you can set it up to where when you log on it will prompt you with an update if you need it so you just go to the settings if you already have it installed and then it's up here where it says run at startup and then you want to click that and then you want to click check for ds4 windows updates at startup so every time you start up ds4 windows i mean i just choose to have my run at startup just because i use controller sometimes but if you don't want to you don't have to have that but you do need to have this part checked but anyway, so every time you run DS4 Windows, it will check for an update. And if there's an update, it'll prompt you being like, okay, well, here's an update. Do you want to update, right? So that way you'll stay current with it. So this is currently what my screen looks like. Once you guys update, it should look just like this. Also, I don't, I don't know why I was getting asked this question, but um, why I chose black as the color. Well, if you choose black or you choose another like color that doesn't show up on the controller, like a default color, so I, th I believe gray is that way, I think black is that way, um, there's a few other ones. But anyway, what that would do is it will actually give you less input delay, it's actually kind of insane. So it's not putting out more energy towards, you know, giving you a really cool color on your controller. It's just one of those things where it's super little difference, but you can definitely, um, you can feel it if you really try. I also realized that another issue some of you guys were having was having double inputs. So if you press your button once, it actually does it twice. Now in order to fix that, first thing you can do um, is just go in your edit tab, go to other, and select D1 input. Now what that does is it actually makes your input pretty much go straight to the PS4 native input. So you can try that. That works for me sometimes. I normally don't like to do that way because then it makes my sensitivity feel like it's slower. And I really hate doing it that way. So another way you can do it is you can also just go down here, your Bluetooth, you can go to your settings. Oh, let me drive this over by the monitor. And once you're in your settings, you know what I mean, you can just go ahead and scroll down, find your controller, hit remove device, and then go ahead and reset your controller. With just a little button on the back, you stick a bobby pin or a safety pin in there, hold it down for about 10 seconds, your controller will reset itself, and then you just reconnect your controller and try it again. And that should hopefully fix that problem. On to the next one. Okay, so now that we got some of the general, you know, questions out of the way, if you guys, like I said, if you guys have any more, comment down below. Um, I wanted to go ahead and go through the output curves and a lot of these little settings in here that some of you guys don't know what they do. And I've been playing around with them, so now I kind of understand what they do. Um, I have a trial profile for this. Let me see. I don't want to mess with my current one. Fortnite one, yeah. Okay, so basically, someone was telling me that you can play, you know, and have the in-game aim assist with linear movement, right? It's not how it works. When you go into the game, it completely changes the way your movement, or the way your, uh, 
character movement and you know sensitivity is when you go into the game now granted your sensitivity in here does matter but it kind of gets converted when you go over to fortnite and some other games too but fortnite pretty bad so there is absolutely no way that you could play with you know exponential aim assist right with linear movement it's not possible just because it's already when you move from linear your sticks are already linear by default and it's actually physically changing your linear sticks to exponential sticks when you switch to that setting so it it, just, it cancels that completely out um also other thing was people were having insane drift and i wanted to go over that really quickly so in game i play on i believe a 7-7 seven, seven? I believe in game or like a 6 6 or something like that i think it's 6 6 so i play on 6 6 in game and i leave it there i really haven't touched it and it now if i have drift at all i go to the software and change i don't go in game i leave it at 6 6 what that does is fortnite's um dead zone isn't as precise as this one is so i'm adjust all of my settings for the most part for my controller in here and i don't really touch anything in uh fortnite unless it's my actual sense right so when it comes to dead zone what you want to do is you just want to keep if you have like insane drift you just want to keep going up now granted that's a big jump like from you know 0.10 to 0.20 so maybe i'd go 0 0.11 0 0.12 0 0.13 right until i have you know no input delay or no uh drift on that stick and then i'll go over to the left stick and i'll do the same thing so most likely what some people will have if your controller is really old you might have like some really insane drift and you might just need a new controller there's not really too many ways to fix drift other than just getting a new controller so if it's really that bad then you might just need a new controller one other thing i wanted to talk about was some of you guys saying you know how's my input delay so low you know your guys isn't that low um again it comes right back to that you know you have like an old controller thing that just happens also comes down to how far away you are from your setup also it comes down to where your bluetooth your bluetooth you know stick is at some people don't even have a bluetooth stick some people have built-in bluetooth now if you have built-in bluetooth a lot of times your built-in bluetooth depending on your pc or your mother i should say your motherboard isn't going to be as good as just buying a straight up usb bluetooth stick because that's all that that thing is for so also if you have like a usb extender so if you know what that means it's where you plug one usb into your pc and you get four out the other end right if you plug your your uh, bluetooth into that it's going to be weak because it's not sending its full signal straight to your pc it's sending you know if you have multiple things plugged into it then it's sending maybe three signals and then each signal is getting maybe cut in half in order to deliver all of that right so your actual bluetooth is going to be a lot worse than just plugging it directly into your pc so those are three like huge factors that can you know impact how much input delay you have directly now my setup which i'm sure some of you guys have seen i have my bluetooth um little stick thing plugged directly into my pc and i do not sit far with my pc my pc is literally like right under my desk it's like right there right and so it's not really in the way of anything also my controller is fairly new it's definitely not insanely new and i definitely am due for a new controller this input delay would probably be quite a bit lower actually if i had a brand new controller so i just wanted to let you guys know that because some people are also asking me that same question as well yo this is going to be the end of the video i hope you guys enjoy if it helped you out any make sure you guys drop a like down below and if you have any questions make sure you drop a comment and i'll be sure to make another video and answer more questions there's a lot of features in here i'd really be keen to try out so just let me know if you guys are interested and uh yeah i hope you enjoyed if you guys did use code atonic in the fortnite item shop if you want to support me more i'll see you guys in the next one peace